Today we're going to take a look at a relatively rare piece from Panasonic. This one's called a CT101 and it's the world's smallest color picture tube television measuring one and a half inches. Let's take a look at this thing. Hi. Now this is something that you don't see every day. This is a Panasonic. Check out the model number on this unit here. This is a CT101. It's a color television. NTSC format. It has a picture tube in it. This is before LCD televisions. And this one is on loan from one of my viewers. And he sent it to me to uh, we'll do a teardown on this unit and take a look at it and uh, we'll hook it up. He doesn't have means of generating a, an NTSC signal, but I certainly do. So I'm going to dig out a modulator. We'll get some uh, pictures happening and uh, see if this thing works and uh, check out the picture on it. Now check this out. These units here, because this is a very small screen, this is only like a one inch screen. Let's measure this sucker. It's like a one and a half inch screen, diagonally measured. Here we go. Yep, one and a half inches. You can see it there. One and a half inch color screen. But what I don't know whether this is an index, I think this is probably a beam index tube. I could be wrong. But I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a beam index type tube. We'll find out when we get it apart. It's pretty easy to tell. It might be a, a, a triple gun, but uh, it could be a beam index, which is kind of what Sony did with their three inch set and the other one that I've got with the seven inch or is it seven inch? Nine inch screen, the projector, anyway. Anyway, these came with a lens that you would slide onto the front here just to make it a tad bit bigger for viewing because that screen is pretty small. But let's uh, let's put some signals into this thing and see what it does. As you guys notice, I've cleaned up my bench a little bit. Um, I have another piece of equipment here sent to me by the same um, person that owns this one. I'm not going to say his name on the channel, but if he wants to chime in, he's certainly welcome to. He also sent me this nice old Tektronix scope. So I haven't tried this out yet. I've turned it on. And I can see there's a few knobs that are broken, so I may have to um, try and get some replacement parts for it if possible. Like the trigger level is broken on here. It powers up and it's got a trace. There we go. Um, I haven't tried it yet. I, it, it just plays a waveform. We'll be trying this out on a future video. And I'm going to do some measurements. We'll, we'll hook it up to a CD player and look at the uh, eye pattern on it and compare it to this thing because this thing here, uh, this is a digital scope, right? And I, I always prefer an analog scope for uh, looking at certain waveforms. It just shows up so much better. Anyway, that's for a future video. But it's just that little nice old Tektronix uh, 2465B. And it says 400 megahertz, but somebody wrote a three in there. So, hmm, maybe they've changed the board on this. Anyway, back to this thing. And uh, if you notice my little sign in the background there, that's just a subtle reminder if you want to contribute to my channel. That's the best way to do it because uh, with the uh, the troubles at Patreon, it's um, I don't think those troubles are going to go away anytime soon. So I'm, I've kind of given up on that platform because uh, in the last year I've been using it, it has not done absolutely nothing for me as far as uh, creating any type of uh, sustainable income, as they say. But uh, my PayPal donation has, so I appreciate that. I thank everybody that has. And we're getting a little reminder here in a few minutes that that's where you send the money if you want to support my channel. I think I got it in there correct. So I've got my power supply set to 12.0 volts. Got my current limiting at one amp. We're gonna plug this thing in and we'll see what type of power this thing draws. When I turn it on, looks like this is gonna draw about 1.23 watts, 0 0.95 amps at 12 volts. There we go. So this is just coming off of my cable box. 
the news is playing on there, I think I can probably put that on without fear of um, getting smacked around by copyright. But uh, yeah, it's got great little pictures, small. And you know what? I'm looking at this thing, and I think this. I don't know if this is a beam index tube or not. Looks like little tiny dots on there. There's my security cameras. This is just, uh, I've just got a clip going here to my uh, antenna, right? Uh, from my modulator, my host cable. So I've got a few channels that I uh, put on my own system. This is my in house system here. Let's uh, put the magnifier on and get a closer look at this thing. So there it is with the magnifier on it. Still a pretty small picture, but you know what? It's got a actually got a quite quite a nice picture. It's you know, I mean it's a CRT, so you would expect that it's going to have a fairly nice picture. It's just tuned by a variable tuner, so you just tune it. It's got the the line goes across the screen that tells you what channel you're on. So I should be uh, hitting. Where am I here? Uh, that was channel seven, I think. That was seven. And this is 9, and this one is 12. If we go over to UHF, um, <clears throat> I have, uh, I think I got something on channel 40. It may not come in very good here. And I've got that one on channel 27, but they're not as strong. Uh, there's a channel 27. I have a time display on. 40. No. Looks like there's some debris between the front. Um, cover here and the picture tube but uh, I know you guys want to see what's inside this thing and so do I because I'm curious is this a conventional color CRT or is it a beam index tube well it's really easy to find out because a beam index tube will only have one electron gun and one filament and a uh, conventional CRT will have three I'm betting that this is a beam index tube that's what I kind of think it is. But we'll find out once I uh, get this thing apart. So let's crack it open. So to open this little unit up, so screw back here. I think these units also operated off batteries. I don't know if there's any batteries in this. I think it probably had a rechargeable pack. No, it didn't. It used, uh, it did. It has a rechargeable pack here. Nickel cadmium rechargeable. But looks like you can, uh, well, they look like double A cells, but obviously they're, they're bonded on one end here. So you could put, uh, you could put a regular pack, I guess, in this thing as well. Anyway, uh, these batteries look like they have, seen better days I can see a bunch of corrosion here so the packs themselves are I think pretty much toast anyway that's that's that let's uh, continue to see how we open this unit up I've only seen one of these units once and that was when I was uh, in the business we actually sold one of these units but I never had the opportunity to uh, have to repair one so remove the second screw here and the top just kind of lifts off just like that and there it is there is the picture tube on this unit here are our adjustments our focus and screen adjustment here you can see the the part number on this is an A04 JGM09X. When you search out the uh, CRT picture tube number, it comes up with the television picture tube color mask question mark. So they haven't even listed whether it's got a shadow mask in it or not. You'll find that the power supply lifts out. Here's your power supply. 
This would have your DC to DC converter, I imagine, on it. You know, I think this is a conventional CRT on this thing. I don't see an index. Uh, see, a beam index tube is going to have a. It's going to have a sensor on the side of the tube that detects the index because how a beam index tube works is you have your red, green, and blue stripe, and then you have an, in, an ultraviolet stripe, which actually flashes inside the, the bell of the tube. And then there's a little detector that detects that strobing signal, which is what's used to decode the red, green, and blue time slices and switch the beam accordingly. And I don't see anything like that on here that would be the uh, timing circuit. So I have a sneaking suspicion this is a conventional tube. I don't want to take this thing too far apart. I don't want to damage any of these ribbon cables, so I'm being very careful as to what I remove on this thing. Because I have to send this thing back, and these things are quite rare and quite valuable, so I just want to kind of really be very, very careful when I inspect this thing. Of course, another way of telling what it's got on here is we just look for the video output. If we see three video output uh, transistors or circuit, then we'll know for sure that it is a conventional tube. But I have a sneaking suspicion that it probably is. I'm just going to get my magnifiers and take a close look at this thing. So here's the, the tuner in the IF board. Your tuner's here. Here's your IF circuitry here. It's amazing how this just all folds out. And they're not using conventional ribbon cables. These are actually multi-connector and they have solid wires that are soldered right down to the board for these interconnects. Our main board is on the bottom here. This has got your sweep control. The video and chroma uh, sub adjustments. And I was looking to see how many how many wires actually go to this little CRT because that'll give us an idea of whether it's a a single gun or a three gun. The number of wires. It looks like it's got a red and a green. Are these are those the outputs? Is there a blue wire? Oh, there's a blue wire in here too. I see a red, a green, and a blue. I bet you it's three guns in here. And then there's a white and a yeah, I bet you this is a conventional tube on this set. It looks like it's a it's got three guns, like a regular standard shadow mass type picture tube. I bet you that's what this is. It's not a beam index. Interesting. This is a conventional tube. And these here would be your convergence for your purity and your convergence adjustments, right? Damn, that's a conventional tube on this thing. Very interesting. I was expecting this was going to be a beam index just because of the size of the tube, right? But that's just in incredible. But here's our, this is our chroma circuit down here. Here's our, our crystal. So this is going to be the, the color burst crystal. Here's our tuning system. You notice it's gear driven. Just turns a tuning, uh, just a regular variable resistor because it's a voltage synthesis tuner. So this just adjusts a tuning voltage which is sent up here to the, the tuner itself. You've got your 3.5 megahertz crystal down here. Subcolor adjustments. And sub brightness. That's probably your setup switch for setting up your cutoffs. It should be the three controls for the cutoffs too. They're probably over here on these funky modules on the side here, which uh, I'm not a big fan of these type. These are like a ceramic uh, module that had components glued down to it. They just they were a pain in the ass when they when they fail. There's no way to service them. They have resistors. If we look down here, you'll see the 
hope my camera will stay in focus. Probably not, because after all, it is a Sony. These are uh, resistors right here, so I find something to point with. All right here's some surface mounted resistors, but see, these are also resistors here. These black lines, these are actual resistors that are painted right onto this. This is a like a piece of ceramic and the components are attached to it as a transistor here and these are big time trouble especially when they had surface mounted electrolytics attached to them uh, not so much of an issue on this because I don't see any surface mounted electrolytics in this unit it's got conventional through hole which is good that's why it still works if this had surface mounted electrolytic caps in it this thing would not work I can pretty much guarantee you that because they would have pissed all over the board here's our deflection yoke conventional design there and our, our flyback transformer and focus block is back here and as much as I like to tear this thing down even more I'm not going to because it's not my unit and it's got to go back to its owner and I don't want to run any risk of causing any damage so I figured you guys might like to see this thing I think it's very cool um, just the the design of this thing is that, you know, this, this is something that you would expect from Sony, this density of uh, components. But a uh, very neat little unit. I say, this is the first one I've had the opportunity to actually take apart and look at. Got some surface mounted resistors here. Here's our fusing on here. I if these controls are uh, labeled as to what they are. Okay, here we go. The horizontal hold is over here and one of these is probably the vertical hold uh, this is going to be a deflection this is looks like um, that one is see the vertical size or linearity and this one would be the other one here I think a vertical hold is over here on the side you got your conventional color tint brightness and contrast over here and vertical hold and um, this set was manufactured March 1985 so it's 32 years old now almost 33 yeah just such a cool little unit Power it back up here. I'm going to electrocute myself in the process. This will be the audio amplifier here. This board, this one here. That's going to be audio amp. To give you an idea how strong my cable signal is here, there's nothing attached to this. Okay, I've got an antenna. I've got a piece of wire sitting a foot away from it that is being coupled in to the antenna terminal, which is going to go back here. If I touch that on there. Okay, there. Now the picture snaps in. But um, yeah, this thing is very, very cool. Very cool. I would definitely put one of these in my collection, given the opportunity just because the, the, the cool factor on this being a, a, a CRT I mean it's pretty small you can't really watch much on this even with the magnifier it's still small but it's just the whole the whole factor right um, of it being a conventional CRT take a look at it with the magnifier here get some good high power magnification on it and take a close look at this thing I'm going to give you guys a treat. I'm going to photograph the screen of this thing with my microscope. And we'll take a look at that. Uh, what looks like dirt, but when I was looking at it with my inspection goggles here, my inspection hood, that actually looks like it could be phosphorus damage on that actual tube. So uh, I'm going to take some pictures with uh, this and we'll take a look at it. <clears throat> Okay, I'm recording this now on my uh, microscope. And uh, we're looking at that uh, blemish. Oh, maybe it is something on the screen.
my microscope is having trouble uh, because of the the scan, right? It's uh, causes it to kind of flicker a bit. But you can see the dots clear as a bell. Bring it in a little bit closer. Get an even closer shot of it than that. Yeah, it looks like there's just some debris um, between the pitcher tube itself and the the plastic. It looks like it's not it's not a damaged tube. You can see it clearly there. There's some dirt or something in there. That's the tube. If you're looking at the magnified view that I've got on the screen now, you can see how the tube how the dots are lined up on this. They're all in a row. All the like all they're all in a vertical row. All the reds are lined up, all the greens are lined up, and all the blues. So this is a what they call it a, a conventional delta uh, mask, and that's another way you can tell that it can't be a beam index tube because a beam index tube has to be an inline gun for the index stripe. So that's a dead giveaway right there. It's a, a delta matrix. It, it cannot possibly be a beam index tube. Of course, when you have a moving image on it, well, there's your moving image. Oh, I'm not tuned in. It's rolling. That would explain why it's uh, not looking right. That's a bit better. Okay, if I find something on here that we can focus on. Where are we? So now what we're looking at now on this file is uh, this is actually a moving image. So in close up of course, so as the image moves around the dots are going to light up and go out. So you can get a bit better focus there, there you go. It's about as sharp as I can get it. But as the uh, content changes of course, and the, the dots will light up to generate light on that portion of the picture. Very cool. I, I think this is the coolest thing. Okay, got enough recording on that. This microscope I've got is turning out to be quite useful. And uh, yeah, very neat, very neat little TV. I don't want to show that for more than a few seconds because uh, I'm sure it will pull a copyright if I do. Even when it's only on a one inch screen, and give you an idea how small that thing is. Well, my thumb is almost as big as that screen. That's how small this thing is. To put it in perspective, there's a ballpoint pen. Okay, um, yeah, it's uh, it's bloody small. Anyway, um, that's pretty much all I can show you on this thing. I'm going to put this thing back together now so that I can uh, put it back in its box and uh, send it back to its owner. I'm sure he'll be excited to get it back. I'm, I'm sure he'll have probably sound in on this video by now. And uh, here's uh, here's the warning. High vacuum picture tube dangerous to handle, you think? Yeah, uh, a tube with the same type number for continuous safety. Uh, good luck. You're never going to find one of those. X specific service technician x-ray precaution. Uh-oh. This product contains specifically designed components essential for x-ray protection. Refer to the manual for exact replacement parts. The operating voltage must not exceed 11 kilovolts as set forth in the service manual. 
adjust the high voltage rating from 8.5 to 11 at zero beam current or with a very dim picture at 120 volt AC line uh, power because this thing would have used a conventional AC adapter not a switching inverter not a regulated supply so conventional adapter the voltage would float if your voltage is a little high your voltage would go up and that would in turn put your high voltage up a bit and that could cause the unit to uh, emit x-rays and uh, that's that's about it interesting little TV hope you guys enjoyed this look at this vintage set that uh, most of you are likely never to come across because these things are rare and when they do come up for sale they generally command a relatively steep price much steeper than I would ever pay to collect one but uh, for those that are collecting this is a very collectible little piece of equipment and it just goes back together just like that I'm going to do one final test before I pack it away because I want I want proof that the unit is working when I put it together so that nobody can make a claim that it doesn't work so there's only two screws that hold this unit together and that's them we'll put the non-functional battery pack back in this thing hmm. I guess it goes in like that Actually, I think it's non-functional. Maybe it does work. I, ah, that battery pack can't work. There's no way the cells are leaking. Okay. There it is. Working. We'll adjust the color on this thing. Whoops. We'll just uh, play around with the controls here. We have color level, which is cranked all the way up. Way too high. And we have brightness over here. We have contrast. And of course vertical hold. Well we know what that one does. And color. And say the color was the color was cranked all the way up like that when it arrived. So let's let's put the color back down to a more reasonable level and make this thing look good. Oops, my uh, power plug is loose. But the view finder magnifier back on. There it is. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you again real soon.